What's going on everyone? Today we're in the office as you can tell and we're doing a little bit of computer work. Mainly talking about Lightroom and Photoshop. This is mainly for aerial photographers or people who use aerial images and what we're going to be doing is creating an easily usable and reusable address label so you can highlight the property you are selling in relation to everything else when you get these very high and expansive aerial shots. A prime example is taking this aerial image and adding this address label to it. So it really stands out and shows you where the property is. Let's go. All right, everyone, here we are at the computer. Thanks again for joining us this time. I'm gonna jump right in. And as you can see, I've got up Lightroom already. And I'm gonna show you, as I mentioned before, how to take this simple aerial image and add an address label just like this so you can really highlight the address that you're trying to showcase when selling the property in relation to all of the amenities over here. So here we go, let's jump right in. The easiest way to do this is actually to go into Photoshop. This is one of the few times I go into Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how to build this out in Photoshop so you can easily use it every time without having to recreate it every time. This is one of the few disadvantages of Lightroom but either way, what you're gonna do. So take your image after you have it edited, right click in it and you'll see this edit in function right here. This is how I personally move things from Lightroom to Photoshop and back to Lightroom. So everything stays organized in my Lightroom catalog and I don't have multiple catalogs and multiple files of everything all over the place. Either way, I digress, let's go. Jump right in. Now you have multiple options, but since we're only gonna do one image right now, we're gonna edit in Adobe Photoshop. Boom, just like that. Now I've already got Photoshop open, so I'll open it up. Here's the image right here. This is it. Now I'll show you how easy it is for me when I'm creating my address label since I've already done this project. I come right up here to my libraries, go over here where I have my address level created, Place layers, very important you do place layers and not place linked. Place layers will allow you to place the entire subject matter that you created before. And this is what makes editing the address very easy. So when you look, I open this guy up and I've got just a few things and I'll go through what each one is. Obviously first I have the text layer. This is the text right here. Then I have the box, which is the little white box around it. Then I have the black interior box and then I have the arrow. Now the reason I have all these as separate entities is because sometimes agents don't like the black box or I don't like the black box and they like the see-through box. So I like to have that as an option because either way it looks slick and clean, just kind of depends on your own personal um, likes and desires. So here we go. Now, as you can tell, I've already got it all created and I have personally put it into my libraries right here. I use my libraries a lot. As you can see, I've got some random other layouts all up here. These are all different examples of, I've got all my logos inside of my libraries. This allows quick access to just about everything I need quick access to, like logos or these templates in particular. Now, I'll show you how to go through all this from scratch. So let's go ahead and we'll delete this address label and we'll start with the very first thing, which is going to be the little black box. Now I'm sure there's a hundred ways to do this. I'm just going to show you the easiest way I personally know how to, so you can get it done. Add a new layer, which is this button right here. Layer one, we're going to call this box. And then we're going to grab your little rectangular tool right over here and then give a nice little rectangle. Now, if you right click, you can find fill right here. Fill it with foreground color, which is black. You could also choose background color, which in my case is white, or you can choose black 50% gray or white right down here from the drop downs. Foreground color it is, boom. Now you've got your black box. That was pretty easy. Press Control D and you've now deselected that. It's on its own little layer so you can move it around as you need to. So. Now what I'm gonna do is come over here, grab this guy right here and create a new layer. Once again, using the same tool, your rectangular marquee, I'm gonna come over here and just place it a little tiny bit outside the extremities of this one. Now, just like before, we're gonna go fill, 
Except this time, I'm going to choose white instead of black. Now you've got a white box. We'll call this one border. Now you can take this guy, put it right on top, just like that. And Control D. This is deselected. Now you have these two things, right? You've got your border and you've got your box. But if you unclick the box, as you can tell, the inside is still white. So very easy to do with this. Once again, select your, your selection tool. Make sure you have your border layer selected. Go the same width as your black box like that. And just press delete. Now, look at that. So press Control D or Option D and that will deselect it. Now you have your two together. Now for the arrow, you know, this is where it gets kind of choosy and choicy. You can make your own arrow. You can download an arrow. Um, you can get online and buy an arrow. There are tons of options you can do. Um, I've already done that whole process. I've gone through hundreds of arrows to try and find the one that I personally liked. So I'm just gonna reuse that one and I'm gonna pull it in from my library so I don't have to go look for it right now just for the sake of this conversation. Let's just say if I wanted to pull this in from scratch and not from somewhere else, I could go up here to file, go to place embedded. And whenever you do that, whenever you select it, it should stay within the file. Now I've got my arrow, I've got my box, I've got my border. And the only thing I'm missing is my text. What was this address again? It was 3356 Kane. There we go. Make sure this is all the way at the top so you can see it. And just like that, I've created this simple little process. Come over here, grab your arrow, make sure it's under everything as well. And there you go. Now you have everything together. You have select it all. There's the address that I'm trying to point out. You've just made it. Now, granted, spend a little more time than I just did on it, trying to quickly make it to show you. You can see there's some flaws if I get in here. There's flaws with the whole process because once again, I did it very quickly, but I'm just trying to show you how to create this. Now, you take all this. All right, so what you can do, you take this, select everything, press Control or Option G, and that will turn it into a group. Name this group address label. And now you have everything in one little place that's spelled wrong, but I don't care. Here we go. Everything's in one little place. Now you can come up here to your libraries tab. If you don't see it, you can come up here to windows and go down here to libraries. And that will bring up this little tab. It allows you to add things into your library. All right, so now that we have everything together, we've got it in our little address label. I'm gonna show you how to make it easily repeatable and reusable for every single situation in the future. So now you've got it created. You take this and open up your libraries tab that I just showed you how to open up. And then you just simply grab it and drag it. You see that little blue line right there? That means that's where it's gonna go. If I release it, there it is, just like that. There's the one we just created right here. So if I come to my thing, I can delete this completely. And if I come up here and right click, you have a few different options here. Now, if you are just continually using the same address over and over, or if you're labeling the same thing, you might not necessarily need to change anything. And if that's the case, then you want to go with place linked. That will literally just put it here and it will just be one single object here in your address label for you. You can resize it still, obviously, but you can't change the text if you do it that way. The other option is to right click and instead do place layers. Now what this does is it places the file exactly as you created it onto this PSD or this document you're working on. And as you can see, it popped up right here. This is everything. So it allows you to go into here and change the address whenever you want. And it doesn't change it here. It only changes it here. Now I'll show you how this really works and how it works for my benefit. And I can keep everything rocking and rolling in a very smooth pace, right? So I'm not gonna save this. 
Uh, this, I'm going to go ahead and delete the one we just made since I spent a lot of time doing my other one. So it's a little bit better, a little more refined. So I'm going to show you how now I go through, close all of this. All right. Now we're going to go back in Lightroom and I'm going to show you how I can quickly label a bunch of photographs that are aerially taken uh, for this purpose in particular. So here we go. As you look on my screen, you can see I photographed this property and I've got a bunch of aerials I need to label. I've already done this, but I'm just showing you how to do it. So I grab them. One, two, three. We'll just do these three for now. Now, edit in, just as I said before, you can either edit in Photoshop and this will open them all up as individual files, which is I prefer to do it that way. Or you can open as layers and this is if you were trying to do like an HDR blend or something like that. But since we're not, we're going to open in Adobe Photoshop. Now, since I already have Photoshop opened up, I'll pull it open. Now, as you can see, I have all three images right here. Now, this is where creating that earlier really, really helps because I can go right over here to my libraries tab as before. There it is. Do my place layers. Here's the address. Change it to 3356 canes like it's supposed to be. Then all I have to do is come over here, grab this stuff and move it around. Here is that house. So if I grab this while I have them all selected and drag it up to the top, move it on to the next one. Look at that. There's the house right there. Put it where you want. Drag it to the next one. Boom. Right there's the house. Now if I look at all three of these, they have all three already been labeled properly. Now if you save instead of save as, it will save directly back to the original file folder that this came from. And it will instantaneously pop back up in Lightroom. So it'll be right there next to your other files for export. You won't have to hunt it down. You won't have to save it somewhere else and bring it back in. It does everything for you. So as you can see, we're back over in Lightroom and it automatically picked up those files and here they are. So when I export them to my agents, I, I've got two options for this one because I just made that other one. <laughs> um, either way, if you look through, I've got the one and it sits right next to the original. See how it says one of two, two of two. Now, if you save it in Photoshop and you go back to your Lightroom and you don't automatically see the file, there's an easy way to go about doing this. If you right click on the bottom, go to go to folder in library. This will bring you back to the actual folder in which all of your images are saved in Lightroom for this day or this keyword or however you have it saved and it'll be right there next to it. That's the easiest way to find it. I know a lot of times whenever you just import photos, you're over here working off of the previous import button. So whenever you save it in Photoshop, it doesn't actually go into the previous import. It goes into the same folder that they're saved in. So in order to do that, you have to go to the folder, which once again just right click go to folder in library and it'll bring you right there and you'll be able to find it they'll be right there you can export them off with all the rest of your files and they look clean and your agents or if you're an agent you'll absolutely love it because anyone looking at these images can now see the difference they can see exactly what property they're looking at in relation to everything else instead of just guessing which property is theirs in this vast aerial they've just been provided all right like i always say if you like the information i provided please press that like button mash that subscribe button and i'll catch you next time